in September 2019. So please welcome Professor Emeritus Tanspri Zulkifli bin Abdul Razak. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Greeting of peace. Konnichiwa. A very good morning. Salam sejahtera. Uh, I'm indeed very delighted uh, to be here and I, I must thank the organizers and the Vice Chancellor for giving me this special privilege to moderate uh, Dr. Yuko Harayama's session. Uh, she is not a stranger to us, particularly for those who are searching for the new future and looking at Society 5.0 as a real alternative of what the future could bring. So I'll be very brief on her. I think you can always Google her name and you'll get all sorts of information from her. Uh, she, I would believe, be one of the major architects of trying to make this 5.0 uh, a reality in, in Japan with all the strategies and the meanings and also the implementations of it. Uh, we can see the implementation of Society 5.0 uh, in the last Tokyo 2020 Olympics, uh, although it is not well highlighted because of COVID-19, uh, but there is already a glimpse of what Society 5.0 means uh, to the Japanese and hopefully uh, to the world, to the world at large. Now, uh, uh, Dr. Yuko, if I may, uh, is now working uh, in Riken, another very well-known uh, 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 research, uh, in, in, uh, university institution. Uh, she is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the principal, uh, the executive director, principally charged with international efforts uh, of making RICAN uh, worldwide and known to other people. Uh, she is uh, definitely the person that we want to talk to in the context of disruption in the context of new uh, universities uh, paradigm and framework and i will stop at that and i will now uh, invite her to talk about uh, 5.0 i want to maximize the time because there will be many questions that are coming from you especially also after listening to professor jeff scott uh, just a while ago so on that note can i invite uh, uh, dr harayama uh, for her presentation, presentation, What Matters of Society 5.0. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your kind introduction. Um, I'm very happy to be with you today. And um, <laughs> my attempt today is really to think about uh, the Asia based disruption for higher education through the lens of Society 5.0. Um, just to go to in the substance, uh, we talk about new universities with my previous uh, presenter, Dr. Scott. Uh, of course, we have talked about new universities, but we have a long, long history of universities. Just introduce my topics. Before introducing my topics, I will come back to the long history. Uh, Universities as a social institutions, we may start from the University of Bologna in Europe around 1088. And then we knew so many changes, transformations, evolution of this institution through time. And I just note some critical period. And that could be said Humboldt University 1852 uh, be, be at the roots of modern research universities. So having education training function and research hand to hand. And from, from this period, we saw the really uh, emergence of different types of universities. And we can talk about the higher education system, not only one model, but systems. And today, we see the emergence of more new type of universities, uh, in names of virtual universities. And uh, the very pioneer was open university. And now we are using more and more massive online open courses, MOOCs in short, and we see also emergence at tech today. So how to combine that? So we are alongside ever evolving university system. But we can ask ourselves, what's new today? 
And where we go with <clears throat> under the COVID 19 and the many other factors coming in into higher education system. So just having uh, for you, thinking about what's before COVID-19, what was normal for us. Uh, even before, we knew that it was really a time of accelerated changes uh, driven by digital transformations, in particular, empowered by AI. And we are living in the ever more connected and networked society. And we see the power of science, technology, and innovations. And we saw ever increasing sphere of human influences, not only on the nature, we talk about SDGs, but also in on ourselves, on human. Uh, take the case of <clears throat> AI, neurosciences, and also genome editing technologies. And before the COVID-19, we saw already some many unknowns. Uh, for example, impact on our sites on our society of these technologies. And we see the ever more increased independencies and what could be effects of this trend. And also what I say already is the impact on the nature is so many unknown and we are tackling it with SDGs. <clears throat> and also we have been surrounded by many, many uncertainties. Just to name a few, uh, system with all the nature and the geopolitics dimensions have been increasing. And even addition to the value of democracy has been under pressure. So, and now with COVID-19, what's happened? Uh, it's happened on the ground. Uh, we may say impact on the health and human is really a critical thing. But also, COVID-19 is imposing new rules of the game. Uh, many constraints on mobility of people, mobility of goods, and we have been disturbed on person to person relationship, uh, social distances imposed, and many uh, constraints on the most of the social institution, how to make a business uh, global world change. So as a consequences, we saw increased inequality and social divide. And also at the same time, COVID-19 was accelerator of changes. Uh, digital transformation it became critical, crucial to use all these technologies and uh, take the case of development vaccines. It's thanks to the open science, sharing data, sharing research results, and we are moving more quickly than before. But also we saw the system of a surveillance for example, we are able to make tracking more easily, and it was useful for the COVID-19, but it may be used for <clears throat> other purposes. <clears throat> and it means we have to act, <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> we have to act differently. First step, we, uh, we see the virtual substituting and in particular, partially physical connection. And we are thinking about new way of discover the sense of community and solidarity because we feel more isolated. So we have to think about new form of community making. And we have to assess what is essential because we can do everything at the same time, so concentrate on essentials. And we see the key elements in this story is, first of all, role of science, technology, and innovations, and also the value of preparedness. And what we are doing today, which action we are taking today, is really impacting the future. That means we have to think about the responsibility, reasonable action for the future generation. But what could be the implication on higher education? Uh, 
to talk about this, <laughs> to discuss about impact on higher education, I would like to introduce uh, Society 5.0 as a mean to set a framework for the discussions. So just in short, in some slides, uh, it, it, it is a concept proposed by the Japanese government. Uh, I have been one of them. Uh, when we have been starting to discuss about how to formulate our scientific innovation policy. Just a background, a uh, really short historical framework for the Japanese context. Uh, since 1995, we are functioning on the base of five-year planning to re lead our science, technology, and innovations. And uh, to, after the 2014-15, we have been in the preparation of fifth scientific unit basic plan. I was really uh, working for the Japanese government at, at this moment. And with my colleagues at the Council of Scientific Innovation, we have been discussing <clears throat> how to prepare the fifth scientific unit basic plan. So, based on the discussion, we recognized that we have been living in the time of accelerated change as data transformation, as I, I explained to you before, and almost impossible to unforeseen, uh, foresee the future, so unforeseeable future. So, it is contradictory with uh, planning thinking because we need to have clear idea what the future will be uh, to make sure that our plan is appropriate. So it's really a difficult task to make a plan for five years. And also at the same time, we saw the emergence of global associated change to so just nominal a few, climate change and other inequality. And the, the 2015 was, remember, uh, SDG was under preparation. So we have been working at the same time the SDGs. So, based on this uh, recognition of these elements, we felt we need to have a new grade of scientific innovation policy. So, from this, we say instead of thinking to think technology at the heart, by the past it was really more technology driven approaches, we have to shift to more human centered approaches and putting society at the heart. And also we'll be using fully the power of scientific innovation, but society should be backed by STI, including AI, big data, IoT, robotics, and so on. So but we need to really make clear to have a clear idea on which values we be putting at the center of the future society. So after the discussion, we identify some key values in names of openness, sustainability, and inclusiveness. And looking after the society, uh, we say no anymore, just top-down type of policy. But we need to put everybody on board, including ordinary citizen, no? It's not anymore reserved to scientists, engineers, politicians, but for everybody. And in particular, it was so important to have this approach in the context of aging society. So just you, you understand now why we are putting society at the heart, but what 5.0? So it's really, we need to think about the law of technology. And for that, we have our attention was to revisit the meaning of development. And for the civilization point of view, we may say starting with hunting and gathering society, and it was what we call it uh, Society 1.0. And remember, this time we have been living in symbiosis with nature because we have been dependent fully on the tanks of nature and to keep 
the power of nature was really a necessity for the survival of human being. And then uh, never more human was not satisfied to be dependent on the nature, but working on the nature. Then you see the agrarian society coming in and 2.0, and it was really starting of being of the human organization. Later on, uh, not only uh, working on the nature, we have been able to manage, master the power. And uh, then we moved to the industrial society 3.0. And we have been able to make mass production and standardization the, all the way impacting the nature of the society, social structure. And then today, where we are, we are increasing user of intangible and network information. So we are today information society of Brazil. And we are already be becoming network connected thanks to all these tools. And the, the challenge will be designing, imagining what's next. We call 5.0 the next society that we'll be building together with the precepts just I described before. Uh, go being to advance scientific and innovation and also to achieve economic growth, but as well as well-being, we are putting society and human at the center. And we have to really use digital transformation as an enabler, not dictating our life. And also we have to address societal challenges in the context of aging society. But we see the many challenges also induced by this transformation. So privacy issues, all these ethical issues to be addressed with. And also we need to contribute to the global prosperity. And that's why we are aligned with the society, with the sustainable development goals. And we need to talk about the governance framework, framework and digital transformation. So to put really in short, uh, this is the definition uh, with you can find in our fifth center and basic plan. The key element is regardless of age, gender, location, language, or the limitation to be able to fulfill a comfortable lifestyle, society at the first, and where everybody can receive high quality services. So this is the concept of society. So now uh, we have to check what's the impact of COVID-19 and through the eyes we try to, to look at through the eyes of Society 5.0. Uh, what I said before, so many constraints and accelerating digital transformations. And we saw that so many impact constraints on the human being, not only the health, but the way we organize our life, social institution. So the idea of the putting human at the center is essential. And also, uh, as we saw that we need to have create new sense of community, expressing a new way of solidarity and assessing what is essential. This exercise could be done by participation of everybody. So we need to put everybody on board to this endeavor. Of course, we need to take advantage of power of scientific innovation. So based on the scientific innovation, and as I say, we are responsible with our action for the future generation. That means we need to keep this value together and share way to address the impact of COVID-19. So as I may say, society members are still valid in some sense because human centered approach is needed more than ever before. And we have to take more and more advantage of scientific innovation just to understand COVID-19 and to develop vaccine, therapeutic and diagnostic tools, but also to understand the impact of COVID-19 on our society and human being. We need to mobilize social science and humanities and arts. And we need to, really, uh, to develop and experiment means to adapt to the new normal. 
Of course, value of openness, sustainability, inclusivity is key, and everybody on board is really critical. So, what's impact on higher education and road of high, higher education? That's the next step. Uh, we see it has been developed uh, by Professor Scott before. I'm probably repeating some of items. So that can be summarized uh, in this slide. Uh, I just mentioned different function of higher education, teaching. Uh, we have been able to timely adapting to online and hybrid, but we need to add human touch in this education. So how to do that? We need to discuss together. Regarding research activities, uh, some activities have been temporarily suspended, postponed and redesigned, but we have been able to use advantage of data. So accelerating data-driven approach and online collaboration was in place very quickly. And the priority was on COVID-19 related work. And through this, we saw the value of institution that we call preprint, sharing data, sharing information before the final publication and open science. And we see the active contribution to the development of vaccine, therapeutic and dynamic tools. It's really important to have this research activity within higher education. And also research infrastructure services provided by higher education, some have been temporarily suspended but we have been able to switch online again, accelerating remote operation and it's make greater access to this information, uh, infrastructures and the public services and the delaying service versions sometimes, but informing the general public and the policy makers about COVID-19. And uh, it's, we see that we saw the greater demand and expectation of pressure on higher education to make more informing people and providing public services. And how to address this information? How to insert, ensure the research integrity? That's this dimension we should be discussing together. And that's the eyes of the testing the capacity to adapt and to satisfy the proactivity. So this is my last slide. Uh, I would say key tips. It's really based on my personal experiences. As a university, as a social institution, we need to know ourselves. And uh, even under the pressure of the COVID-19 and many other pressures, we have to take account to make advantage of existing assets. So taking over your asset. And sometimes when you are inside, you don't see the value of your assets. We need to have a look from outside. So we need to really explore view from outside and probably to discover hidden value of your own assets. And also it's, I'm repeating sometimes with the Professor Scott arguments, we need to create space for experimentations and learning from trial and error. So really challenging new way of running universities. And basically, what is the key is dialogue and dialogue and dialogue. And what is critical is find your partner outside your comfortable zone. That's mean different institutions, but different discipline and global partners. And also the role of society for the society. Uh, we have to remember we are socially embedded institutions. And what could be the challenge is to be unique and to be engaged for the society. So this is my slide and uh, mm -hmm. that so good. I have somehow already lost your voice, uh, Dr. Harayama. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so okay. For the last slide, probably. Yes. Um, I was just talking about uh, tips uh, on my presentations. And as I say, it's really an argument to be unique and to be engaged. And I'll be very happy to talk, explain more detail, Society 5.0, but I'll be very happy to discuss with you on the, what could be the new university, what could be the next generation of university related to the what I, I discussed together. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you very much for that very enlightening and very unique presentation. I think uh, we will see many things that the Japanese are taking in at a different slide and a different uh, approaches. Uh, for sure, I think the word for IR does not appear in a big way as this in many developed countries, particularly Malaysia. Uh, we are still talking about technologically oriented education rather than a human centered education despite our national philosophy talks about the human-centric uh, sort of education. So I, I think uh, we have got about uh, 40, uh, 15 minutes now uh, to go for the question and answer session. Uh, if I can have the first question, I'll be happy to post it. But otherwise, I will, have, I will start with my own question, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Yuko, if you don't mind. Uh, I think it amazes me that the Japan, Japanese are always one step ahead of the world as it were. Uh, I also am beginning to read Osaka 2025 that you are planning. I hope the COVID will be kinder then to see a lot more of the new initiative of human-centric education, human-centric society, and also human-centric science as it were. Now, what is it that makes the Japanese think quite differently from the world at large? Um, you know, when you look at the history of Japanese industry development after the Second World War, we have been in the face of catching up, existing advancements of technology outside Japan, in particular US and Europe. And we were working hard. So our value was really uh, working hard and really investing in the technologies. And we are improving imported technology and we are able to create additional value to the technology and it was the driver of economy and driver of well-being for the society as a whole but by the end if we look back to the what's happened with the industrial developments sometimes we are not so good for the nature and even for the social institution the way we are working was not sustainable in the way to keep uh, the value of a human being. So really uh, assessing our past experiences. That's why we have to have a new way of moving ahead. Uh, of course, we we taking advantage of technological capacity, but it is not the only unique driver. That's why we said we have to really uh, reassess the positioning of technology and also putting at the heart this society and the human being. So it is not saying we are living ahead uh, aside of technological advancement. We will be living and we are advancing again for the technology. But technology by say, technology is any more the cases. And that's why the challenge was really uh, making uh, people as a driver. Uh, and even today we have, we see the advancement of artificial intelligence. And uh, even with the industry sector, we are using robots and uh, industry robots, but uh, many tasks will be replaced by technologies, but the key decision making and the key beneficial should be human. And also we need to redesign our way of running our society. As I say, with the rise of aging society, we have to make society more friendly for everybody. 
including elderly, small children, foreigner, and to make sure that we are living for the value of human being. That, that, that's an issue. Okay. If, if I can just follow up, there's a question coming up. I just follow up from your question. And we talk about values uh, very, very much now after the COVID-19. Could I then assume that this value-based education is already culturally uh, ingrained or in the in in the what we innately uh, put in the in the Japanese society? Um, education system, uh, Japanese education system, very efficient uh, because we have primary school, secondary, high school, and university system quite well organized and in an efficient way. Today, the question is only efficiency is critical or do we need to have more human center education, as you say? Uh, the answer is the second one. That's why we need to invest more on the human relation side and also to make aware of our young students and university students to have concern about the impact of their action on society and on the nature too. So it was very timely to have SDGs uh, since 2016 and Society 5.0 since 2016, okay? And uh, it's really a, a kind of invitation as uh, teaching materials to redesign the way we set up our curriculum and also make sure that they have good transition from school system into society. So that's easily, we, we, we have to really, uh, probably uh, we are taking more advantage of technologies, ed tech including, but this is not to really focus on the technology itself, but to be able to use all this technology in the way to have more human touch in education and the higher education. Thank you very much. There's a, there's a question that talks about, uh, we are talking about education as a human endeavor uh, to make sure that human civilization lives on. But the question is, why do you put the label 5.0? Why the numbering? It sounds very technological rather than human centric. That was the question. Um, just to explain to you the background, why we adopted this 5.0, it's really uh, IT people's uh, thinking. Uh, when you are creating your new algorithm, uh, when you have a new version, you have 1.0, 2.0. .0. So, uh, the ideas was really putting society at the heart, but how to explain the future design of society? Some says um, we have to think about the super society, uh, extra society, some adjective to clarify the differences between today and the next step. But it was it didn't sound so good, and to make feel at home for any type of people. We say today we are talking about internet and everybody are connected and everybody feel familiar with this type of expressing uh, different versions. So that's why we adopted new way, but it's really, uh, we are not against technologies. We are using, we are exploring technology, but to sub society to sub human so it is not contradictory for us to have society and 5.0 okay thank you i think in other words we are you are trying to humanize technology as it were there's a second question that coming up it says uh, are you promoting moral values enablers technology uh this is really a, a question that we have uh, this debate within the japanese uh, context because now we are focusing more on enabling technology, uh, more data-driven technologies, but the strength of Japanese industries is more on the 
industry 4.0 type of technology. Uh, car industries, uh, other uh, manufacturing technologies, and uh, it was the really start in 1917, 18. Today, what we need is really uh, combining, uh, not putting aside all this technology, but adding new value to this technology. Because even if you are looking at high tech technology like Google and so on and so, they are shifting, adding to their technology uh, all their devices, product, manufactured product. Does it, so we don't need to have really separation between information uh, aside and manufacturing, but this combination. And the, 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 the key will be how to foresee the evolution of your businesses and really combining all these traditional technology and enabling technology. So that, that's the difficulty because you when you have been you new success in your sector you stick to this uh success story and difficult to foresee what could be really a new challenge for you so today it's time for the japanese sectors to really uh, think about the futures uh combining uh capturing the value of new enabling technology but not only these technologies all right and there's another question uh, how do you guard against the negative impacts of technology we're talking about addiction for example loneliness all this new quote unquote human centric problem that leads to mental health most of these are sort of uh, attributed to the misuse of technology how do you guard against this for the younger generation at least so we are at the government uh encouraged encouraging to really invest in new technology enabling technologies and also to implement all this technology in everyday life uh many cases with a uh, new technology information related one online technology and so on so so just a case of a smartphone so we are really a heavy user of this technology and this enabling facilitating our life at the same time we have a negative aspect. You are more, you are connected, but you feel more isolated. Mm. And also you feel you are surrounded by so many informations, but you are lost in this information. You are losing the, what could be the references for you. So any technology, more than more, they have two faces, usefulness and probably potential negative impact on you so what's there's no one fit all solution but the approach that we can we are trying to really encourage is from the beginning those who are developing technology engineers scientists to have a discussion and to think about the misuse or bad use of technology from the beginning and to make sure that you are conscious about this. And for that, we need to have this approach, everybody on board, inviting ordinary citizen or potential user or small children uh, to this debate and really uh, have uh, feedback from others. Because usually when you are inventing some technology, you are so uh, glad to have this technology and you see, it's the best thing for the society. It's your own view. Yeah. And you have to check, assess your vision with others. So first of all, we talk about living lab or space for experimentation. I was talking about this idea really from the beginning, before that your product be on the market. Think about engaging people to have a feedback and if it's possible to prevent negative impact. Thank you. I'm going to ask you a, a quite a kind of technical question. I don't know whether it's a fair question, but I think you should be able to uh, to, to grasp on this. 
there is this concern about this point called the singularity. I'm sure you have heard the singularity, where the human intelligence are overtaken by uh, algorithms, uh, the AIs, that will then will create another sort of, uh, you know, uh, interaction or what they call the post-human interaction or the transhuman interaction. Uh, has this gone into the calculation of Society 5.0 when you talk about moving uh, the human-centered sort of uh, uh, approach of moving forward? Um, as I mentioned in my presentation, as a key enabler, we have the artificial intelligence and also combined with the neurosciences. So we will be able to go in depth in human being to understand what's happening and control and manipulate in some sense. Singularity is domination uh, by uh, AI. And uh, there are many debate on that. And that's why when we started uh, with the Society 5.0, I have been able to call to set up a committee within the Council for Scientific Innovation, working on the AI and the human society. And we uh, have discussing about six months and we have launched a report and we are making sure that we be investing in AI technology. At the same time, what's a key element we have to be careful about. So many dimensions like economic dimension, technological dimension, social dimension, and ethical dimensions, and so on. So we have listed uh, some factors. And that's exactly what we have discussed before. Uh, when you are developing new technology, we need to take care of this dimension. So you can have a look on our report, and this route became a kind of principle for development AI, and we have expressed Japanese view on these principles, bringing these principles into the OECD debate, and now you have OECD uh, principle for AI, and we are in line with the thinking. But uh, the, it's, it's nice to have these principles, but next step will be implementing on the real cases or this principle. So we are just checking what's happening on the ground. But uh, regarding singularity, uh, I have a chance to discuss so many, many experts in this field. Uh, technologically, uh, it's possible, but today and in the coming foreseeable future, uh, this kind of singularity story will never happen. Uh, but we have to be careful about the use of technology because they are potential. And uh, the way is one way of thinking is putting human in the loop. Mm. Uh, but uh, my argument will be putting human at the center. So that's the way we have to continue to discuss and make, make sure that everybody is keen about all these issues. It's not leaving uh, this debate to only uh, engineer. My, one last question, perhaps if you don't mind, I think we are going to wrap up the session soon. As you talk about changing uh, education in Japan, are you looking at the whole spectrum of preschool right down to tertiary school? Or do you kind of segment it? What is the approach that you take in Japan for this Society 5.0? I just explained to you uh, at the university level, uh, just to make uh, cases. Um, we are encouraging universities to introduce at the first year, first to second years, uh, to have not discipline oriented uh, courses. So adding a new program uh, cross-cutting and uh, SDGs is uh, an example uh, to think about societal challenges and uh, make sure that what you are learning and uh, that we're developing later on will be uh, parts of this uh, debate and encouraging to have cross-disciplinary actions. So this is at the university level. At the same time, uh, 
primary and secondary level school, uh, we have uh, many uh, pilot cases of school program introducing SDGs as a platform to make uh, our children thinking about the future uh, and also nature and the society. So there, there are many additional courses. The, 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 the problem is time constraints. They have so many things to run yeah. and uh, we, we don't want to lose essential <laughs> competencies. But additionally, we need to have this thinking and it is not at the university level, but from the beginning, from the primary school. Thank you very much, you. Uh, Dr. Harayama. I think your, your session a little uh, so exciting that the time is not sufficient. We'll probably call you back again uh, to have a, a bigger discussion on what what need to do as we move forward. So on behalf of the audience and the organizer, I would like to thank you from the bottom of heart for your enlightening uh, talk and also opening up another window for Malaysians, particularly when we talk about 4IR, please have in mind that the, whether the human beings are in the center or if they are there at all. Uh, the way it goes now, I think the human beings are being sort of siphoned out because it's all about technology, about economics, and it's not about the people as such. So I hope this session will bring us to a closure in trying to understand where we need to go forward. And for that, I would like to thank again uh, Dr. Yuko Harayama for the ex, ex, uh, what you call enlightening uh, presentation, and we wish you well. Thank you very much, and back Thanks to the very, moderator. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. A pleasure. Right, thank you very much, moderator and our keynote speaker, for the very intriguing session just now. Before moving on to the next agenda, we'll take a short five-minute break. I would like to remind you that CB points are still awarded for this session. The link will be given in the chat box and the QR code will be displayed on screen for the participants. We'll see each other again at 11.45 a.m. Malaysian time. Thank you.